shed for my seat. Woo! Glory to God. Listen, this is what we're going for, folks. We're not playing with this at all. We are so serious about this. We are so, so serious about a move of the Holy Ghost in our lives. And, you know, the, the significance about this in terms of a move of the Holy Spirit in our lives is, is just how that comes in our lives and uh, grows and, and just comes into a place where it is no longer just a move of the Holy Ghost. It's a life of the Holy Ghost. And that's what we're working on every day is to be able to have that in our lives. And I pray, I pray that that is what you are working on. That's what I'm working on to be the move of the Holy Ghost, to have that every day as our testimony, as we infuse the culture with the lifestyle of Pentecost. Consecrate us, Lord. Consecrate us in our minds. Consecrate us in our wills. Consecrate us in our thoughts. Consecrate us, God. Put, put your spirit in our hearts and consecrate us. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. We, we want that. We need this. This is not something that we just sing as a song. This is the, I believe, will of God for us. That we would be able to to really understand the meaning of this. That, that this is nothing to play with. Oh God, I need you to sanctify me. <laughs> I'm not playing with this. I need you to sanctify me, God. I need you to sanctify me. Oh God, I need you to sanctify me. Purify me. <laughs> Miracles, signs, and wonders to flow out of me. Amen. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I be, I must have. Woo! I must. It's a lifestyle, Mother Mary. God bless you. It's a lifestyle, Mother Fanny Putman. It's a lifestyle. Woo! Mother Pearl, it's a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Doris Pete, it's a lifestyle. Good. Woo! Yes, 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 yes. All over the land, all over the world, people are dialing in this morning. Good morning, Australia. Good morning, Pakistan. Good morning, Liberia. Good morning, Atamana. Good morning, Kenya. Good morning, <laughs> Pastor Lenina Jenkins. Good morning, Tanya Shelton. Good morning, Jackie. I must have. Woo. Just get a little bit more of that. I must have. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning. Good morning, Delamitria. <laughs> Grant. Hallelujah. Ooh. Yes, yes, yes. Sarah Cook, it's a lifestyle, Glory Dean. It's a lifestyle, Yvonne. It's a lifestyle. Hey, sha na na na. It's not a fly by night. This is a life. We ain't playing over here. <laughs> Pastor Lamina Jenkins, we're not playing. Woo! Pastor Nita, daily, we're not playing Bianca Rivers. Hondo She. A real move. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, yes, yes. Infusing the culture. Moving my life. Yes. 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 It's not just a song. This is a. This is a cry from my heart. Yes, sir, John Andrew Hart. I got you. <laughs> oh, Dr. Patrick Johnson. <laughs> Dr. R. Patrick Johnson. <laughs> ah, hey, I must have. I must have. I 
can't play with this. Good morning, Elder Valerie Thomas. Good morning. Yes, 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 yes. Praise the Lord. And I tell you, as we make our way to Pentecost, I am so excited about you. Listen, I want you to get your communion and I want you to get your $5 seed, get it in the ground early. So in case we, wherever we end up, amen, we might be someplace else. And while you're here, Wendy, come on, everyone, like, tag, and share. I want a valid, legitimate move of the Holy Ghost in my life. And so we must put to death, we must put to death our members. We must put to death our members, which are on the earth. We must put to death. There's some, there's some dying that has to be done. There's some death to self that has to take place. Oh God, there's some death to ourselves that must take place. Hallelujah. I must die to me. And live to him. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like John the baptizer. He said, I must decrease that you might increase. Oh God. Ooh, I must decrease. Somebody write that down. I must decrease so that you might increase. That that right there, that'll help us along our way. I must decrease. My God, Pastor Jean Glover, good morning. Good to see you. That he, Holy Spirit, might increase. Now, it, it, it's, it's a balancing act. Come on now. It's a balancing act. It's, it's, it's a, there's a tension between me and him. Amen. There, there, is a, there, is a, there is this tension between who's really in charge of me. Am I in charge of me? Or is Holy Spirit in charge of me? Is he in charge of my thoughts? Is he in charge of my ways, my choices, uh, my mindset? My God, my mindset. Somebody say my mindset. <laughs> oh, yes, God. Yes, God. So I must decrease so that he will increase. Now, here, here's the guarantee. If I continue, y'all got to hear this. If I continue to decrease, he will continue to increase. Oh, is anybody here? It's called sanctification, folks. I know that's a word that you haven't heard in a long time. And I want you to understand that there is no increasing of God without a decreasing of us. It's called sanctification. And as we die to self, as we move out of self, as we move out of our own mindsets and philosophies and, and uh, perspectives and lenses of our own soul, as I decrease, then Holy Spirit will increase. I need you to hear this. This is very, very serious. Lean in close. If I want, if my cry, if my prayer is that the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, is my lifestyle. Holy Ghost, Pentecostal living is my desire. Then I must decrease and he will increase. Somebody get that. I need you to grab that right now. Glory to God. Now, when John spoke of it, he spoke in the dispensation of Jesus and the prophets. I need to help us because sometimes we need context. And so when John spoke of it, he said, look, I'm a prophet after the similitude of Elijah. I am a prophet, Mickey, after the similitude of Elijah, which represented the old covenant prophetic flow. The old covenant prophetic flow, Elijah, now manifested in John the baptizer. Amen. The Bible says that John would be in the wilderness and he was the baptizer and his, his clothing was odd. His mindset was different. 
his uh, um, mythologies, his modalities of deliverables was totally, totally new and unique. So he came in the similitude of the prophetic flow of the old covenant. But he said when the Messiah comes, the one in which the Holy Spirit will remain upon, he is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost, then I will decrease and he will increase. So the prophetic was now, glory to God, going to become subject to this new dispensation. <coughs> Is anybody hearing me? This new dispensation that John was in as the paradigm was shifting from the old covenant, the old prophetic, the old law, now was moving into the dispensation of Jesus. Listen to me. And now, hallelujah, Jesus says to his disciples, you wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. Now we're shifting uh, the paradigm again. So after 33 and a half years, the paradigm shifted. And now, uh, now we are in this third, or this third day, if you will, or this third wave, uh, depending upon how you want to define it. And we now must say, I must decrease, that is the self, that is to uh, modern day religion. I, I must decrease, man, all that stuff, modern day politics, modern day uh, postmodern Christianity. I, we must decrease to self and, and allow now Holy Spirit to increase in our lives as we're standing on uh, the precipice of the next outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We've got to work on this thing called sanctification. Sanctification simply is the process that leads to holiness. Sanctification is the process that leads to holiness. The desired outcome is holiness. And it is a measurable outcome. Just like you can get an eval on your job. You can get an evaluation on your job. There is an eval, a constant and consistent evaluation that is taking place on your holiness and how you are closing your margins of error. I'm still there. Ah, glory to God. I must decrease. I must decrease uh, in my flesh. I must decrease in my in my attitudes, I must decrease in my habits. I must decrease, come on somebody, my margin of error. I've got to decrease my margin of error and Holy Spirit will increase, listen, my ingenuity, my, my wisdom, glory to God. He will increase my accuracy. He will increase my precision. That is the goal, folks. The goal is not that you are saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit and you're just a better liar or you're just a better fornicator. You're just a better thief. No, we are not to be better sinners with the power of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives. And one of the distinctives of Pentecostal power is sanctification. Are you with me? I need you to lean in because I need to get this in your spirit. I need you to understand that you must willingly participate in your deliverance. You must willingly participate, come on now, in your sanctification. You must willingly participate. You must willingly participate in your productivity. You must willingly participate in closing your margins of error. You must willingly participate. There is not going to be a workaround for you. There's not going to be a workaround for me where we're going to get around this process or we're going to find a way to escape or we're going to find a small crack somewhere where maybe in the small print we didn't read it. You're not, that's not going to happen. Our sanctification is predicated upon our intimacy with Holy Spirit and our obedience to what he says. Ah, yeah, sanctification is the process 
that leads to holiness. And you will be evaluated on your holiness. You will not be evaluated on your tongues. You will not be evaluated on your miracles. You will not be evaluated. Those things are part and partner with Holy Spirit in your life. Those are his gifts. So the healings are coming from Holy Spirit. That's his gift of healing. That's his gift of prophecy. That's his gift of signs, wonders, and miracles. That's So you won't get evaluated on that but you will get evaluated on how well did you participate in your process of sanctification? Did you give the Holy Ghost a hard time? Were you rebellious? Were you stubborn? Did you procrastinate? Did he have to tell you five or six or seven, eight, nine, ten times? Let me tell you, one of the worst whippers my mama ever gave me. What my mother was not a whooper. My mother was, was a talker. She would sit you down at the dining room table and talk for hours. That was punishment enough. I just rather my daddy beat me. <laughs> Mama said, go in that dining room table and I want you to sit down and I want you to stay there until I come. And when she came, she came with the newspapers, the Bibles, the Sunday school book and everything else. We're going to be here a while. <laughs> my daddy was just going to beat you and it was going to be over. All right. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> but she would evaluate my behavior. And one particular time I was showing out and I didn't show out often. She always would tell me, you're not a bad child, but you are mischievous. <laughs> you're not a bad child, but you are mischievous. But this is what got me. She, she had told me to do something and I heard her. I heard her. And in the back of my mind, I said, I'm not going to do that right now, but I am going to do it. She told me again. And I said to myself, self, <laughs> don't forget what your mama's saying. And when you get ready, we're going to need to do this. Amen. And she told me again. So she told me maybe about six or seven times. And I kept putting something in front of it, putting something in front of it. Then, you know, you forget it. Boy, oh boy, I was standing in the bathroom, <laughs> getting out the tub, you know, getting myself together. We had no showers and all that growing up. We had a good old bathtub. Amen. Baby mother came through that door. What? <laughs> and we had, the way our bathroom was situated from our kitchen, mother had a full length mirror in the bathroom. So from the kitchen, she could keep an eye on us in that bathroom. And she would look in that little full length mirror and it would reflect. We had a nice big size bathroom. It would reflect what was going on in that bathroom. Mother came through that baby with a dishcloth. A wet dishcloth. I <laughs> divorce shot. I'm naked and wet, baby. <laughs> Mother wore me out. And I didn't know what I was getting the beating for. And she said, you know, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Why I got to tell you? So, and each, you know, each syllable was a hit. <laughs> Why I got to tell you so many times what I want you to do. Did not you hear me the first time? I'm like, mama, you killing me. I'm not in a way. What's up? And she walked out the room. And then suddenly, <laughs> like magic, I remembered. I remembered what she had told me and how many times I taught myself out of not doing it at the moment in which my mind reminded me. Y'all not going to hear me. And so this is where we keep getting off and we get wooky. <laughs> this is why our margin of error is not decreasing. It is not because Holy Spirit didn't say it. That's never going to be the problem. Number two is not that you didn't hear it. Now you, you, you heard it because he speaks to us in our own language. If you like pictures, he'll give you a picture. You like words, he'll give you words. And sometimes if you're a hybrid like me, you get both. <laughs> so you're going to hear the instruction. Holy Spirit's always going to give it to us. 
and we are always going to receive hear it. Now, hear where <laughs> right, my sister said, just make me tell call daddy. Please call daddy. Because if I have to sit this down with table another hour, good God, this is abuse. <laughs> but let me tell you something. I never did that no more. It took that one naked in the bathroom, wet body, dish towel whooping for me to take what my mom asked me to do within the time frame that she asked me. This is why our margin of error is so large. It's because we did not do it within the time frame Holy Spirit spoke to us. <laughs> Come on, my children, Pastor Shannon. Come on, Chief April. Those are my girls. Yes, that dish rag, that dish rag is the, it's all right. It's right. It's kind of like a switch. My God, y'all not hearing me. And so when we don't, when we don't decrease and we begin to be increasing instead of decreasing meaning we're running our own life <laughs> we are running it on our own timeline i'm telling you holy spirit is constantly trying to sanctify us and many times it's not the act that we are trying or he's we're trying to do or not do it's the heart it's the heart behind it it, it, it's it, my. I, I remember another whooping I got. I don't know why I'm remembering whoopings today, but I remember another whooping I got. I was in my bedroom. About this time, my sister was there, and we had twin beds in the same room. And um, oh my God! And I was making up the bed or whatever, whatever. And uh, this, I'm telling you, this this was another loop. This wasn't a beat down like the other one. This was like a pop. <laughs> this this was a pop. And she said, mm, you did it. I saw you do it, but you didn't do it when I told you to do it. Pop, walked on out the room. Good God Almighty, what is going on with this lady? This lady, she got issues. But what she was teaching me is not just to do it, but to do it when I tell you to do it. So I came out the room, I'm a little older now, so it ain't that, that hard beat down. I'm like maybe 11, 12, you know, and I'm a little bit more, you know, mindful. And I might have been about 13. And so I went out in the kitchen. I said, Mom, what? She said, you didn't want to do it. You did it, but you didn't want to do it, baby. And she was absolutely right. I did it, but I didn't want to do it. See, all of those things matter when we talk about holiness, when we talk about the process of sanctification. When we are about to be in the, in the move, we're, ta we, we're talking about infusing the culture with Pentecostal words and Pentecostal lifestyles and Pentecostal vocabularies and Pentecostal mindsets. It's not just what you do, but it's the heart. It's the willingness to do. I was getting ready this morning about 3, 3.30 and the Holy Spirit dropped that in my heart. Isaiah chapter 1 said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Not just are you, be, are you obedient, but you are willing and obedient. Samantha, yes, Thomas Young, it shaped my brain. You better know it, Leslie Lemons. My God, it, 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 what, that's what she was doing. Listen, write this word down. Write these two words down. Spiritual formation. Spiritual formation. Write those words down. My sister in the Lord, Dr. Jessica Ingram, God has given her uh, this, this burden of spiritual formation. And we were talking the other day, and it, these are two words that we have got to resurrect spiritual formation spiritual formation it's a discipline spiritual formation when we can hear holy spirit and we do what he says we have the right mind and we do it within the right time frame see he's not just working on us doing it 
He's working on the whole part of us, our hearts, our minds, our will. He's working on all of us. And it's called <laughs> spiritual formation. My God. <laughs> Say one time my granny beat her with a slipper. Oh, listen, we, we don't play spiritual formation. Dr. Noreen Davis, God bless you. Wow, spiritual formation. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about discipleship. We don't, we don't, we've lost these key words, key words of our, our relationship and our fellowship with God. You know, we've made everything so common and so easy, baby. Oh my God, it wasn't. <laughs> Fresh out the water, baby. I was, woo, I was thinking all day. I, so you didn't take no bath in the day. You took all your baths at night because it wasn't no one. No, you weren't doing all that in the morning. When you got up, your hair was combed. It had your bath and your clothes was laid out. So you, you, now you got to go to sleep. How you going to go to sleep? You can't go to sleep. <laughs> you just tossing and turning. Oh, my God. <laughs> Baby, I learned to pray early. And that's this is what we do with the Holy Spirit. But we do the same thing. We do the same. We talk about Israel, but we're just as disobedient. We're just as rebellious as Israel. So I want you, I want you to look at Colossians. Let's go to Colossians. I want us to go to Colossians uh, chapter number three. Let's go to Colossians chapter number three. Get your communion and get your $5 seed in the ground. Praise God. And if you missed a couple of weeks with your $5 seed, come on in and catch up and go forward. Praise God. Listen, what we receive and what the Holy Spirit is doing is so amazing. Colossians. And I want you to get that. Praise God. Wow. Wow. Colossians chapter number three. And I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. Colossians chapter number three, and I want you to go uh, to verses five and six, and really, you really need to uh, read all of this, but look at this, I'm going to start with verse one, Colossians, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven and not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in his glory. My God. So put to death, verse 5, the sinful earthly things that are lurking within you. We keep talking about the world. We keep talking about, but what about the stuff that's lurking? I, this is the new living lurking. Man, whoa, lurking in us. That already just sounds diabolical. Lurking in us. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's lurking in us? And have nothing to do with sexual immorality, with impurity, with lust with evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of the world. And because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. Colossians chapter number three, verse seven. You used to do these things when your life was still a part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of Come on, of anger, of rage, of malicious behavior, of slander, and dirty language. And don't lie to each other, for you have been stripped off of your old sinful nature and its wicked ways. Verse 10, put on your new nature. Wow. And be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him in this new life it doesn't matter if you are a jew or a gentile circumcised or uncircumcised barbaric or uncivilized slave or free christ is all that matters and he lives 
and all of us. Now, verse 12, since God chose you to be a holy people, he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender hearted mercy, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, and with patience. Verse number 13, and make allowance for each other's thoughts and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And above all, clothe yourselves with love, and by, be, and which binds us together in perfect harmony. And let the peace, my God, that comes from Christ, that's the anointing, rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its riches fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with the wisdom that he gives. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it. My God, this verse right here will get you. This one, this, this gonna tighten us up right here. And whatever you do, whether you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Wow, am I? Are y'all are y'all hearing me? <laughs> listen, listen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Sister Glenda Fields. God bless you, Key Nicole, Valencia Clark. Amen. William Lamont. Come on, my God, my God. This right here. There is no. Where's the margin of error? Where where's the error here? The margin of error is so tight. It's so small. Uh, how how do we get beyond this? this? This is simple English. It doesn't need exegesis. It doesn't require you to know Greek or Hebrew. It just says, do these things. Participate in your own sanctification process. Be an active participant in your own sanctifying process. And continue to decrease so that Holy Spirit can increase. Hey, now that, that, that's, that's not, this ain't hard to understand. That you're living in the culture as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Colossians chapter number three. Are you listening to me? You, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. This a disobedient life includes attitudes and actions. Your margin of error is predicated on your attitude and your actions. Your margin of error is predicated on your attitude and your actions. And our physical person craves and longs after and desires these things. It's put in us. It's put in us to love. It's putting us, we're sexual beings. It's putting us to have sex. Praise the Lord. It's putting us to love and to be loved and to be pleasured and to give pleasure. That's put in us. Y'all not going to say nothing. Come on, let's go all the way down here. That's putting us to desire tasty things in our mouths. Uh, uh, lobster tails and, and, and steaks and, and whatever your palate calls it's it's put in us praise god that is put in us to desire to look nice to be to be esteemed to have a great presentation that's that's within us that's the part of us that's like god we have been put in the earth to be like god we are the image of god the image o day we are the image of god in the earth so we are like God in the earth. So we desire to look good, to be received, 
to be honored, to be respected. We desire pleasure. We desire intimacy. We desire these things. Those things are put in us. Stop denying that you're human. <laughs> you, if you're human, you desire it. If you're human, you want physical contact. You want physical intimacy. You want friendship. You want a circle of people that, that value you and value your voice. That's human companionship, friendship, fellowship. You desire that. Here's where the problem comes is when we allow those desires to dominate Holy Spirit in our lives. So because those things are natural with us, Robin, say, because those things are natural, Estelle Flanagan, because those things are natural, those things are given to us, it's not sinful. Your sex drive isn't sinful. Ooh, y'all not gonna say that. That's not sinful. Your, your desire, your appetite for good food, that's not sinful. Your appetite to shop and to have a nice car and to live in a nice home, that's not sinful. What begins to happen, Pastor Ingram, is when we allow those things that are non-sinful to cross the line, if you will, the parameters of the Holy Spirit's constraints. Those things are normal. Those appetites, those desires, those drives, they are normal. The endorphins, the chemicals, those things are natural to us. But Holy Spirit puts constraints in our lives. Holy Spirit puts boundaries in our lives. If you say I do to an individual in a covenant of marriage, then that's a boundary. That's a constraint. Your sex drive isn't wrong as long as it stays within that constraint. Y'all not going to hear me. Woo, glory to God. We, we are not, we are not abnormal people. We're not freaks. We're not walking around here with three heads. We're not aliens. We have normal, natural things that God has put in us to rule, to super rule, to dominate, to have leadership, to have oversight, to have relationships, to have children. These are normal things. But Holy Spirit puts restraints. He gives us boundaries. And so when you cross the boundaries, that's when your what is natural now becomes sinful. Ah, glory to God. Woo, glory, glory. Listen to me. Stop making sex drives. <laughs> Tasty things. <laughs> My daughter Shannon, help me, Lord. Stop making natural things sinful. It's not sinful. It's not sinful to desire good food. It's not sinful to desire good sex. It's not sinful to desire a good living wage. It's not sinful to desire a good house, a good car. Those things are not sinful. But it has to be within the constraints, within the constraints of what God has given us. We're not aliens with three heads, monsters. Holy Spirit simply wants to help us to manage this stuff, to manage these appetites, to manage the things. My God, to manage our, our wantings and our wooings. He just wants to help us to manage it so that it does not in any way misrepresent who we say we serve. Glory to God. And we need to rebuild our constraints. We need to reestablish our constraints. We need to reevaluate our constraints. We need to see if there are gates broken, latches that don't lock anymore. We need to reevaluate where am I not walking within the constraints of the Holy Spirit? When I'm on my job, you have constraints. If you go beyond those constraints, you can get fired. Your email 
you can get less pay. Are you listening? These are the areas that we must listen to Holy Spirit. We need his help. We need his help with tasty things. We need his help with our desires. We need his help. Stop asking the Holy Spirit to help other folk. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. The outcome of sanctification is holiness. And he, he who has called us to this, he is faithful to help us stay within the lines. My God, y'all ever pay, play uh, hopscotch? Y'all you ever play that on, on the street? Y'all don't know nothing about these games. My God, I saw a commercial the other day and a girl was, little girl was trying to get the postman to be friendly. So she took chalk and drew uh, the pattern of the hopscotch out on the sidewalk. And the, and the postman came through and he normally didn't speak, but he saw that. And he, and he, and he did double, he jumped. Y'all remember that? You could get, you could get in between the lines. But if you landed on a line, you was out. Oh God, teach us Holy Spirit. Teach us Holy Spirit. Teach us Holy Spirit. When I was out of boundaries with my eating, and I was out of boundaries with my appetite for food. I'm not a, I'm not a candy person, uh, but I can, I can eat candy, I, you know, but it's cookies and brownies and cakes and, and pies that, that, that right there, Lord have mercy. And my mother did not serve a meal without dessert. She would make fried pies and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And yet you had to eat all the food, right? And so you, you grow up, you know, in a certain culture and, but, and it's nothing wrong with a fried pie, but you can't have seven of them. You can't eat 10 of them. <laughs> you can eat maybe a half now because you're older, your metabolism. And listen, when you're out of boundaries, it shows. It shows you go from a 12 to a 24. It shows. <laughs> Amen. When you're out of boundaries with your physicality. Uh, you, you, you don't keep your body strong. You don't, you get sickness and disease. It shows when you are rude, when you are constantly misbehaving and disrespectful, it shows you become unemployed and poor. It shows when people don't like you. It shows your attitude when you're out of bounds with your attitude, with being offended, with being judgmental, with being critical it shows you have no friends and sickness and disease that will give you a bit of heart. So when we are in the boundaries of Holy Spirit, we just read a boundary. Colossians chapter number three, we just read a boundary. My God, my God, listen, listen, listen. And first Thessalonians chapter number five, let's just go there right quickly. First Thessalonians, we're talking about closing our margins of error. First Thessalonians chapter number five. And I just want to give you one verse. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Don't quench him. Mama said, uh, did I, I need to need to do that. And you quench it. I, I would quench it. <laughs> but she, she quenched me that particular day. My God, listen, you, you hear it. You don't, it's not that you don't hear it, but you override it and you work negatively against the Holy spirit. That's called quenching the spirit. That's called quenching the spirit. The NLT says, do not stifle the Holy ghost. Do not stifle the Holy spirit. And many of us, we are guilty of that. Yes, Pastor Blocker, when you're coloring in the coloring book, you got to what? Stay in the lines. You got to stay in the lines. And, and we, we, we don't, coloring ain't wrong. You know, ha having crayons ain't bad, but it's when you start using your crayons on the wall that you get a beating. <laughs> when you start coloring your house with a crayon, oh my God, Lord Jesus, I remember that too. <laughs> Hey, glory. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with crayons. Nothing wrong with a coloring book. 
But the crayons belong on the coloring book or on paper, not on the wall in your bedroom. These things are normal. These are good things. These are things to be celebrated. These are things to be loved and, and to be adored. But when we get out of the lines, so you must participate in your process of deliverance. You must, listen, some stuff the Lord is not going to take from us. He'll just draw the line and ask you to stay in the lines. We have this donut shop here in Detroit, and I only visit it about three times a year because it's one, it's called Dutch Girls. It's not Krispy Kreme. It's much better than Krispy Kreme, and Krispy Kreme is, 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 is already at number one. But Dutch Girls in Detroit, I, we think, is the best. And they do this double chocolate stick donut. Hey, glory to God. Woo, glory. Hey, I feel God. I feel, I had nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. It's a double chocolate donut with chocolate icing. Now, if you want me to be happy, <laughs> hey, that right there. Now, I used to be able to eat three or four of them, but I can't do that now. Now, I can only have one, maybe once or twice or three times a year. My boundary, why? Because he come out, she go shit. Whoa, glory, glory. Yes, God. Because he's he's tightening up my margin of error. And you've got to be able to recognize when what was your quantity is now excessive. What you used to be able to do a lot of, now he's saying, uh-uh, you can't do that now. Stay off of Woodward and Seven Mile. Just don't even go down there. <laughs> Are you listening to me? So we have to recognize when he says decrease so I can increase. So our quantity will change. You used to get eat six of them in a week by a dozen. And you can eat them all week. But now you can have one, maybe three or four times a year. What's happening? My margin of error is decreasing. I'm decreasing so that he might increase. You're not going to keep the same quantity. You're going to have to recognize that Holy Spirit is gone. He may not take it away, but he will decrease it in your life. It does, it's not as important. It's not as important to you. Ooh, glory to God. Is anybody hearing me? Listen, listen. I want you to go to an Old Testament scripture in Ezekiel chapter number 36. I'm going to close it out and we're going to, we're going to take communion. And I hope that you have your communion because we're going to take this and we're going to move. Hallelujah. And this of course is God speaking to Israel, but I want you to hear what God is saying to us today at the school of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter number 36. And I want you to run on down, if you will, to verse 25. Ezekiel chapter number 36, verse 25. I'm in the New Living Translation. Thank you, Joyce. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Yes, God. Mm. Hey, God. Your filth will be washed away. <laughs> And you will no longer worship idols. Come on, double chocolate donut from Dutch Girl. My God. Woo, all of us. You, you, you can make an idol out of anything. Too much TV. I remember the time I'd get up in the morning and the TV would be on and I would go to sleep with the TV on. And now, if I turn the TV on twice a week, you see, it's decreasing. Yeah, entertainment. I remember going to the show every weekend. And, 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 oh my God, it's, and, and those were the periods of times when our margin of in, our margin of error was larger. We had more space. We had more longitude and latitude. But as you grow in this thing, as you walk this out, you understand you must decrease. And the Holy Spirit is decreasing us. He's decreasing us so that he will increase. And I look like at my age, still fornicating. 
what I look like at my age, still cussing and getting drunk and going to the club and hanging out with dudes. What I look like is decreasing. He has sprinkled clean water on me. And now I'm, be, I'm more cognizant. I'm more cognizant of, 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 of Holy Spirit in my ear. I'm more cognizant of when I get off. I, I, I'm more cognizant of it now. I'm more cognizant when it's a distraction. I used to would go to sleep with the TV on, and now I can't stand it. I can't stand waking up and that TV is on. It's such a disruption. Please, my house is quiet. I ain't playing a whole lot of music because I'm studying most of the day, studying for the school of the Holy Spirit, studying for school. I'm in two universities, in comprehensives and one finishing up a dissertation. I'm in another one over here. Why? Because my margin of error is decreasing and my viability and my productivity is increasing. So I must give attention to Holy Spirit. I must give more attention to what is more valuable in this hour. Who is anybody here? Come on, the old say, come on. Shanda, you, you got to pay attention to Holy Spirit and how he's decreasing you. He's decreasing. That's not the work of the enemy. This is the work of God. He's sprinkling clean water on you. Oh, Reba Shekamahanda. And I will give you a new heart, verse 26. And I will put a new spirit in you. My God. Ooh, hallelujah. A new spirit. Now that S is a small S. That's your human spirit. He will put a new spirit, your, your spirit recreated that was dead in trespasses and sins has now been quickened by the Holy Ghost. A new spirit is in you. A new spirit is in you. That's your spirit. And I will take out your stony, stubborn heart. I will take out your stony and stubborn heart and I will give you a tender and responsive heart. Oh, glory to God. A tender and a responsive heart. Thank you, Catrice. I will give you a tender, listen to that, and a responsive heart. And I now, verse 27, will put my spirit woo, in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. Woo, good God Almighty. Hey, hey, hallelujah. We must be more cognizant of this. This is a process. But you must participate. Don't be unresponsive to Holy Spirit. Don't, don't be unresponsive to Holy Spirit. When Holy Spirit is speaking to you. <laughs> hey, glory to God. I love that, Devon. Say we often pray for increase. But we ought to praise God for the decrease. Come on here. That's a word. <laughs> hey, Betsy Willis. Dignity. Listen, Pamela, we have got to cry out to God the same way John the Baptist. I must decrease. I got to decrease. I, I got to decrease. I just have to decrease. It ain't nothing else to be saved. I must decrease so that he will increase. Understand how this works now. He doesn't increase and then you decrease. No, no, no. You got that wrong. You must decrease so that he will increase. I must have a valid, legitimate, authentic move of the Holy Ghost in my life. Listen, I want you to take communion. We're going we're gonna to commune on that word. We're going to commune on that word right there. I must decrease. I must decrease. I I want you to hear this. I don't know. Grab grab a cracker. Grab whatever you have, and take the body of the Lord Jesus. 
He has given us what we need to decrease. He has given us his body so that we can decrease. And we break it and we eat it together. I must decrease. We got to eat, we got to decrease, folks. And <laughs> anamasika, a tender and a responsive heart. DP man. Here we go. And this is his blood. That is for the new covenant. The new covenant that is in his blood. That is the power to be responsive to the Holy Spirit. And now we drink it together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we pray now for these, your people. We pray now, oh God, that you will give us a responsive and a tender heart to the Holy Spirit. Put your spirit in us and cause us to keep thy law. Lord, have mercy upon us <laughs> and incline our hearts to keep thy laws. That's all it is. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy laws. It's just that easy. Have mercy upon us, O oh God, and incline our hearts to keep thy laws, Timothy. Lord, have mercy upon us <laughs> and incline our hearts to keep thy Thy laws. <laughs> Listen, we can do this. We have help. We have the paracletos. We have Holy Spirit. And he will incline our hearts to keep his laws. But now we have to obey. We must decrease so that he can increase in our lives. <laughs> Woo! So that seed of $5. God bless you right now. Do it now. If you haven't already done it, this is Faithful Five Friday. If it's not Friday and you're watching, give anyway. If it's blessing you, give. You want to give more? Give more. But we're giving multiples of five. God bless you. If you're doing Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, which is bank to bank, it is Corletta Vaughn at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, www dot go tell it dot o r g and hit that donate button or you can do simply cash app lord have mercy upon us come on we modulating and incline our hearts to keep thy laws hallelujah lord have mercy upon us come on and incline our hearts to keep thy laws. God bless you. Listen, happy Mother's Day to all of you. We love you so much. Listen, pay attention to the Spirit's voice. I love you, but I got to go. <laughs> Hashtag, share it on your pages. Pentecost in a pandemic, 50 days to Pentecost 2021. And if you missed the lie, go to our YouTube page. Just put in your search bar. Go Tell It Ministry or Carletta Vaughn or Pentecost in a Pandemic and it will take you to our page. Have a super day. I love y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God.